Sunday, 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 watch Molly take on Putsy in the epic battle of the baboons. We'll sell you the whole seat, but you only need the edge. Hey fellow primates, it's Natalia for D News. You've probably heard of alpha males fighting tooth and nail for dominance in their group, but did you know that alpha females also exist? At the Toronto Zoo, a group of female olive baboons have been embroiled in their own game of baboons. It began over a year ago with the death of Boss Lady, the alpha female. Her 16-year-old daughter Betty took over the position of alpha female, but soon after she died of natural causes. The next in line to be alpha female was Betty's daughter, Molly, much to the chagrin of an older female named Putsy, who at 18 is three times Molly's age. And so the fighting for power began. The struggle for the throne turned violent and has resulted in six of the 12 female baboons baboons suffering from minor to severe lacerations, some so serious they've required surgery. Zookeepers closed the exhibit temporarily because they were afraid the public, unaware of baboon politics and behavior, would become concerned for the animal's safety. So how does it work? Well, all of baboons live in matrilineal, matrilocal groups, which means females stay in the group as they mature, while the males leave to join a new group. Unlike the males who fight for dominance, females inherit their social status from their mothers, much like a monarchy. Therefore, if you're the oldest daughter born to an alpha female olive baboon, and she dies, then voila, you become alpha female. Currently at the zoo, both females share the throne, as it appears they have come to a truce. Molly, researchers surmise, is most likely waiting for old Putsy's imminent demise so she can assume all the power. It's like Mean Girls meets Game of Thrones meets Big Baboon House. In one study, researchers found that the lowest ranking males showed relatively high amounts of stress, although another study discovered that alpha males also suffer from high levels of stress when there is instability in the group. In the case of male baboons, they do not inherit their social status and therefore have to continually fight to remain on top or strive to get the top from the bottom. So higher stress levels make sense. So perhaps it's not always good to be the king. The same long-term study that discovered that lower-ranking males suffered from high levels of stress also yielded fascinating finds about the plasticity of baboon behavior. The study was conducted by Stanford primatologist and neurologist Robert Sapolsky, which he chronicled in his book, A Primate's Memoir. Sapolsky followed a troop of 62 olive baboons over several seasons in Kenya, affectionately called the Boris Troop. The group endured great losses after its dominant males ate tainted meat. And so, one by one, the belligerent baboon bullies died out, leaving a group of mild-mannered baboons. The result was surprising. Instead of fighting to rebuild the baboon hierarchy, the remainder of the troop were even-tempered. And the troop has stayed that way for more than two decades, with newcomer males quickly taught the unusually genial ways of the troop. For baboons, a species with deeply rooted hierarchical social structure, this is quite surprising. The study supports the idea that social behavior is not transmitted biologically, but learned and shared through example and teaching, i.e. behavior is strongly influenced by culture. Similarly, Molly and Putsy's uncommon truce is also a unique example of how flexible baboon behavior can be. In the case of Toronto's battling alpha females, it's unclear how it will finally work itself out. Perhaps Putsy and Molly will continue to reign in peace, or maybe another coup will erupt. And if Putsy is the female instigating the violence, maybe this brutal behavior will die out when she finally expires. Regardless, the Toronto Zoo has no plans to intervene. They want them to work it out on their own. These battling baboons are proof that non-human primates are incredibly similar to humans. But we still have one big difference, the ability to talk. To check out more about why chimpanzees cannot talk, click here. Somewhere around the time humans began developing the capacity for speech, our FOXP2 gene became mutated. And that mutation resulted in different gene targets being switched on or off in human and chimp brains. And what do you consider yourself? An alpha? A beta? Tell us in the comments below and make sure to subscribe for more videos every day of the week.